I lift up my eyes to you, to you who sit enthroned in heaven. Father, we thank you. We bless your name because there is none like you. None can be compared unto you. To him who sits enthroned in heaven we have gathered unto. Lord, let your eyes be upon us. Visit us in this service, O God. Empower each and every one of us to live the life that is pleasing unto you. Thank you, our Father and our Helper. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Let's lift our voice and say, Father, we thank you. Lord, I thank you. I appreciate him this morning. Appreciate him this morning. Say, Lord, I thank you. Let us subatatapanganagravenimetosim. Sufrafitiminosupranimantonahitigidetusi. Prepare us over party for to mati se prada mangaliata. Say Lord, I thank you. Exalt His holy name. Robakati to friendi misu sovrabi na tigelando. Inkane to sovrabi na manako shukata. Membre teme to sovraga la bosa kata neke robala dam. Me pola hasa dare bolosha. Appreciate Him this morning more. Ande kesi mahanda galahure bada ti safre ti misu sovrahi. I patakata baradosha. Inde to suvrambe ni pola gadada di bada. Appreciate the keep Amarosa, the giver of life. Say, Lord, I thank you. Me pako parata de vragele melo se brave de bede belotosi. Fisoro veta no frede me. Imbre de me to se brala la mukata. Let him hear your voice this morning. Marote na hatagadi marobe na hatagadi ala. Vilope na to soko payata de nana. Let us sufra menos. Ibro vende gedi. Inko posata pala gadada do shamana nana maha. Lift up your voice and say thank you to him. Reto sovrente me noti saliata li heto so anda mahanga di kalados mi prato sabalagada thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord in jesus name we pray say father i thank you for your hands of mercy upon me and my family in this season i am grateful open your mouth and appreciate him marado shamehara for his hands of mercy upon you and your family in this season. Lord, I gave you praise. So, Paradabona, Pico Potati Lohora, Resomete Gelebra de Makadoshi, Imprata Mato Sobrava Galebra de Minos, Mipende Supra Gede, Rato Pata Paradabagaladoshi, Mampratebo, Infreto Supra da Galere Beredo. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Mapa Atuze Hetegali. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. A resounding amen in Jesus' name we pray. Say, Father, we thank you for the moves of your presence, power, miracles in our previous outpouring event. May your name be praised forever in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and appreciate in Marabola. Appreciate our Father Mukade Borado Sebe. Appreciate God Almighty for the move of His presence. His Mumarado Sabela. His move of His power. In Marose Belebara. Signs and wonder miracles. All our previous outpourings. Say, Lord, we are grateful. Supatani Kana Suprave. Impratato Sebro. Lord, we thank you. Maradara Bosha. We cannot take it for granted. And we will not take it for granted. We are grateful, Lord. Parosi Bovalate. Impratone Meladosi. Nete vrake bon de mele brodo. Resu patakata ni bele bono. Mi heto su latanakete. Thank you, Lord. Frando su vravini me to suraha. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, oh Lord, we thank you. For this year at foreign. Say, let your word come to us with power and in the manifestation of signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. Mashallah, potana kodemeko boneteniata. 
Ifra to Bene to go terminal. Oh Lord, we thank you, Baradosi, for this year at war in Napola. Let your word come to us with power and in the manifestations of signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Mashupalati Makula da Malike de Bedados. Mifreto Sobratane, Mambrakato Sobra Vede Bedetanado, Rato Sapa Kataya Garadibe, Imprato Sobra Vede Minata. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Shalanta Kabaro de Mene Minato. In Jesus' name, we pray. Just hold somebody for this prayer. Maya Kopatina Hasiato, Manike Dinara do Saliafa, Lento Kapayado Shiata Manene. Say, Father, by your mercy and power, let your favor locate my brother and let there be total turnaround and transformation in his life. Open your mouth and pray for that person. My father, 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 by your mercy and power, let your hand of favor locate my brother, locate my sister, and let there be total turnaround and transformation of glory in the life of my brother in the name of Jesus. Mahato Gale Gale Brado Mashara, Imprato Sivreme, Meprahato Sebregere Melato Labagalado Shamahada, Vito Pate Kesiko Patanda, Itanato Nemahola Nemahada, Reto Sefre, Prefero Suvreve Sesanda, Palo Safrato Megede Melata. Imprato sefre kede raso bata galera me no manadara leto bata tu gele imprata so gatanda la mande thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord in jesus name we pray in the next five minutes just open your mouth and pray in the spirit makato shapara balada pray with understanding arato seke say lord i thank you marabo da bode brede bram farosa brava sukete frede meno for the things you said to do in our midst this morning thank you for your presence thank you for your presence forante marado sivrafi vilota balabino brada bolada da oh masaho galero thank you for your presence lord maharada spirit of the living god thank you for your presence thank you for your presence say so freve filota na masikopa in Catato Zebe, me prato sevre de minotes, if prato se safrado, me pratan de Michelera dosa, ma prate below, se prate malosi, frevolado me haleleto, sina macrote, maleta mavro de mesicola, me prata tabalo shabarada, press on in his presence this morning, merando siava, vigota me, inco malata sabalaga da bara bradimo, me prata te velo me atosa. Fere me leto sufra vene me tosia mi prata gele seneta na bona mi prate ke do maligi itana haradosh thank you lord ma frato sofra gala bra de bre de me nodo fre fo sofra te ke ma prata ke de mele de le heto sofra me toto de me ende grado masa fato sivre fi rosa sigi in katato shahim thank you lord glory to your holy name thank you father thank you jesus in jesus name we pray lord we are grateful spirit of the living god we are grateful thank you for your presence thank you for your presence thank you for your presence glory to your holy name for in jesus name we pray amen let's just bless jesus this morning just lift your voice to the king of kings and the lord of lords he's the ancient of age the lion of the tribe of judah the one who was who weeks and who will forever be He's the mighty man of valor. Lord, we bless your name. Lord, we bless your name. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. The elders and angels bow The redeemed worship you now Holy, holy, holy are you Lord Somebody join me sing, sing holy Holy, holy, holy Lord you holy Lord you holy you are holy Lord, holy, holy, holy are you Lord. The elders and 
and just bow the elders in the redeemed. Come and bless Jesus this morning. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. Sing holy, holy are you, Lord. the Lord this morning. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. You are the mountain mover, the way maker. You are the light in the darkness.
is Yeshua. He's my beloved amongst thousands and thousands. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's the mighty man in battle. Hey, oh, Shana My beloved is the most beautiful. How much thousands and thousands, my beloved is the most beautiful. How much thousands and thousands, sing my beloved.
Just allow yourself this morning. Just allow yourself this morning. His presence is awesome in this place. him this morning. Take my life and let it be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Shall we pray together? Lord Jesus, we thank you for the privilege to be in your presence to hear you speak your word unto us. Lord, we prepare our heart before you that as your word comes to us expressly, your word will find a fertile ground, your word will grow in us, your words will bring about transformation in us in the name of Jesus. We ask, O oh God, for an experience this morning, an encounter with the living world. Thank you, our precious Father. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Amen. Can you help me welcome somebody to church this morning? Tell them this is the house of God. You are welcome into your father's house. Amen. As we do so, please pick your Bible and open to First Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4, I read the first 12 verses. Sound engineer, can you take care of that noise? First Thessalonians chapter 4. Verses 1 to 12. As for other matters, brothers and sisters, we instructed you how to live in order to please God. As in fact you are living, now we ask you and urge you in the Lord Jesus to do so more and more. For you know what instructions we gave you by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable, not in passionate lust like the pagans who do not know God, and that in this matter no one should wrong or take advantage of a brother or a sister. The Lord will punish all those who commit such sins, as we told you and warned you before. For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Therefore, anyone who rejects this instruction does not reject a human being, but God, the very God who gives you his Holy Spirit. Now about your love for one another, we do not need to write to you. For you yourself has been taught by God to love each other. And in fact, you do love all of God's family throughout Macedonia. Yet we urge you, brothers and sisters, to do so more and more. And to make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. You should mind your own business and work with your own hands, just as we told you, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders, and so that you will not be dependent on anybody. May the Lord bless the reading of his word into our heart in Jesus' name. This morning we are looking at the topic, a lifestyle that pleases God. A lifestyle that pleases God. And the trust of this message is that believers live to please God by living a life of purity, love, and purpose. Believers live to please God by living a life of purity, a life of love, and a life of purpose. This message is to encourage believers to pursue purity in thoughts, speech, and action. 
It's also to challenge believers to live a life that brings glory to God and impacts others positively. To challenge believers to live righteously. And I pray that the Lord will help us this morning to do so in the name of Jesus. Last week, we focused on the topic, a faithful leader. And in the writing of Paul to the Thessalonians, he rendered the account of his commitment, his conduct, and his character. And like we said, this account is applicable to every one of us that is a member of the body of Christ. This application can be used by every one of us in our conduct, in our commitment, and in our character. Today, our topic is a lifestyle that pleases God. Paul in 1 Thessalonians exhorts the Thessalonians to live a life that is pleasing to God because they have been instructed by Paul. Paul has taken time to teach them. So he's placing that demand upon them that they should live a life that is pleasing to God. The instructions are based upon the authority of the Lord Jesus. So Paul here is not talking about what he feels or what he thinks or what he, he, he assumes. He's talking about something that he has received from the Lord and is instructing the Thessalonian. In this our text specifically, he lays emphasis on the importance of a life of purity, a life of love, and a life of purpose. As believers and members of a model church, we are called to live a lifestyle that is pleasing to God. And this morning, we are going to look at how should believers live to please God. How should believers live to please God? So the first thing this morning is that believers should live to please God by living a life of purity. By living a life of purity. Apostle 4 from verse 1 to 8 was speaking to the Thessalonians because he has discipled them on how to live a life of purity. So purity is a state or quality of being free from contamination. Purity is a state or quality of being free from contamination, pollutants, or anything that defiles or corrupts. In the scriptural context, purity often refers to a state of being free from sin, immorality, or anything that violates spiritual standard. So when we are talking about purity this morning, though Paul is focusing on sexual immorality, pure, the issue of purity is beyond sexual immorality. It's anything that contaminates or violates spiritual standard. Believers live a life of purity through the process of sanctification. Paul called the Thessalonians to live a life of sanctification. Now, when we talk about sanctification, the best way to understand it is to know the stages of sanctification. There are many people who teach sinless perfection. There's nothing like that. There's nothing like sinless perfection. But there is the process of sanctification. Number one in that process is positional sanctification. What do we mean by positional sanctification? The day you gave your life to Christ, please listen and listen to me very well. The day you gave your life to Christ, you were made perfect in your spirit. Before God, you are like Jesus. Is somebody with me? At the point of salvation, there's, there's that positional sanctification. You were made perfect. Can somebody say I am perfect before God. In fact, let me call you by the name. You are saint. Hello? You are what? Saint, saint Bagudu. So call yourself by that name too. You were made perfect that very day you came to Christ. You were sanctified. 
true and true. But it does not end there. The next stage is that there's progressive sanctification. What do I mean by progressive sanctification? This is the ongoing process of growth in holiness that takes place throughout the believer's life. It involves the daily renewal of your mind, transformation of character, and increasing conformity to the likeness of Christ. Progressive transform sanctification is empowered by the Holy Spirit and involves the believer's cooperation through obedience, prayer, confession, studying the word of God, and fellowshipping with other believers. So when we talk about this, we are talking about the issue of in your Christian journey, please listen to me, in your Christian journey, peradventure you fall into sin. It does not end there. Now, that does not give you license to commit sin. But what it tells you is that there is an advocate, even Jesus, who cleanses your sin. So progressive sanctification is what we go through on a daily basis. And when we talk about sin, some of us, we always look, focus on sexual sin. It's not only that. Let me tell you. To some, not reading the Bible every day is a sin. Because of the level of consecration before God. So every time the person forgets to read his Bible, he says, Father, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And then the progressive sanctification kicks in. And it's made new again. Are you not glad that you are in such a relationship? That you have this, this loving father that has made provision that in case I know my children because I, I have perfected them but in the process they may, they may stumble. There's that progressive sanctification. So you are covered. Is somebody listening to me? You are covered. And then the final one is the ultimate sanctification. Listen to this. This stage occurs when believers are fully and finally sanctified in the presence of God in eternity. At the return of Christ, believers will be glorified, free from the presence of sin, and fully conformed to the image of Christ. This ultimate sanctification is the culmination of believers' journey of faith and marks the perfection of their salvation. So as we are now, we are going, please, don't look at me. Eh? I'm in the process. Don't judge me. I'm in what? I'm in the process. I'm not who I used to be. But I'm not yet fully like Christ. But I'm in a process. When that time, the Bible says, and we shall see him, and we shall be like him. That's the perfection of my sanctification. So in this process, Paul is telling the Thessalonians that please be rest assured that the issue of sexual immorality is taken care of. Is somebody with me? So Paul spoke to them about the issue of sanctification. Paul challenged the Thessalonians to live a sanctified life, and he started mentioning, and he mentioned one specifically. He said, avoid sexual immorality. Avoid sexual immorality. What is sexual immorality? It means avoiding all kinds of immoral sexual acts, such as adultery, premarital sex, homosexuality, and all forms of sexual deviation. The body belongs to Christ, which means we need to honor Christ with our body. So Paul spoke directly to them. I don't know why of all the issues of P 
purity. Paul zeroed in on sexual immorality. Maybe the Thessalonians were, were having such struggle. But Paul focused on this. Now, Paul did not just tell them, avoid sexual immorality. You know, when, when you give people instructions and you don't... Let, let, let me give you this example. How many of you have bought equipment, electronics, all those things, and the minute you get it home, the first thing you do is to plug it. You saw the instruction manual. They, they, they wrote user's manual. We all see it, but we will plug it. And then when we start operating it, and then something does not work, and say, okay, let's look at the manual. No, that's what you should have done first. So Paul, in helping the Thessalonians about avoiding sexual immorality, gave them a manual on how to avoid it. Is somebody with me this morning? So Paul is saying that for you to avoid sexual immorality, the first thing he told them in verse 4 is that, that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable. Learn. Listen to the word he's saying. It did not just say control your own body. Paul said, learn to control your own body. That means take time to know yourself. Take time to assess your own body. Take time not pretending, not neglecting, not ignoring your own body. Take time to control your own body. We have different threshold of tolerance. There are some men, a thousand women may stand in front of them, especially those medical doctors. God bless them. Because of their practice. Have you noticed that very on rare cases do you see medical doctors involved in immoralities with their patients? Why? They know their own body. Over time, they have studied their own body. But many people don't study their own body. Listen to me. There are women that if you want to shake them, if you stretch your hand, they say, why? They know their body. The last time they shook hand with somebody, they woke up with the person the next day. Listen to me. What Paul is saying is that learn to control, study to control your own body. Know your breaking point and set boundaries. It's very important. Know your breaking point. Know what you can tolerate and what you cannot tolerate. And some of us, we may think that this issue of controlling your own body has to do with men alone. No. The body, the flesh, happens to women too. You see, there's this video that I saw online about this female preacher. In that video, they call her Mommy, um, Mommy Jill. So there was this new convert in church that ran after Mommy Jill and said, Mommy Jill, I've been trying to book counseling session with you, and it's like you're avoiding me. And Mommy Jill was stepping back and said, Yes, I know. You see, the reality is that you are my speck. And because you are my speck, until I can see you like I see, like Christ sees you, this counseling will not hold. Brother Peter, handle this counseling. Listen, that is a woman that has taken time to know herself. When he's tall, square shoulder, six packs, I will fall. When he's light-skinned and he's bearded, I will fall. Take time to learn. When I see them dark and plumpy, there is problem. 
Are we together? That is taking time to say, see, don't deceive yourself. Oh. As for me, I cannot fall. Hey, you are falling yesterday. The act is coming in front. That's what makes men to fall. When they think that, as for me, ah, no, what, what, no, draw boundaries. Paul said, control your own body. Take time to put your body in check. Take time to draw do's and don'ts. Counseling session, it has to be with somebody. Why? It's not that I will jump on the person, but for safety reason. Have you noticed that most of our senior men in the ministry, I mean senior men in the ministry, they do counseling, you know? but have you heard scandals about them? Go and learn how they do counseling. I thought a man like Billy Graham should not be afraid to cancel the First Lady of America. I mean, Billy Graham. You want to cancel the First Lady of America, and you are saying, let's do it in the garden. Billy Graham, ah, 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 Billy, Billy. You are Billy now. The Holy Spirit is with you. You can cancel the first. No, it's, it's in the garden. It's not that Billy Graham will fall or that he will do something but safety measures. So Paul is saying here, control your own body. Can you put safety measures? You see, there are some companies in Nigeria. At times when I visit those companies, I get tired. Lines here, yeah, yeah, checks here, yeah, you must wear this tag here, yeah, you must do this. And then you enter and you come out and you begin to wonder, what is, why all this safety measure? Hey, because it did not happen that time, does not mean it cannot happen. So can you tag yourself? Put C caution. Hello? Church, put what? And please, don't think age has anything to do with it. Uh, uh, me, uh, 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 at this age. Uh, at this age. Ask Abraham. Are we together? So the first thing that Paul advised, counsel, urge the Thessalonians is to control their body. Is somebody going to control their body here? Control it. The second thing he said in verse 5 is that not impassionate laws like the pagan who do not know God. Now Paul is saying that we should resist the passionate lust. Believers must resist the, passionate, the passion of lust. Resist the enslaving power of lust. You see, when you, Paul said like the pagans, there's a way that lust has taken captive of the pagans. They live in their midst. They see how they behave. They see the, the kind of things they do. So Paul is saying to them, please avoid, resist this passionate lust. What are some of the things that we need to resist? Resist the passion for sex. Inordinate sex, unchecked sex. Resist that passion. There are men, there are women who will tell you a day cannot go, ah, me, eh? I must oh, resist. Also, he says, we should resist the passion for pornography films and literature. You see, anything that will feed the passion of lust, you need to put a boundary to it. While preparing for this message, I watched a video a scientific research that was conducted on the issue of pornography. And you'll be shocked that three seconds of watching pornography will take seven years to erase the image slightly. That's, you, will, you will not remember everything, but you will still remember it will take seven years for three seconds. Just imagine yourself, you have your phone, because now you don't need a VCR. In those days, you need a VCR and a TV. Uh, 
but now you don't need a VCR. That's, you know that video cassette? Uh -huh. You don't need it again. Now it's at your, can you imagine people watching pornography at executive meeting? Somebody was dismissed for that. There was CCTV in the boardroom. And the meeting was going on. And on his phone, they were able to focus on his phone. That is somebody that has been caught in the passion of pornography. So the first thing that that documentary said is that it will take that long to wipe away that memory. So you can imagine somebody, three seconds, it will take seven years. Then the person has watched it for two hours is too much. <laughs> Let's just say one hour. It will take your lifetime. That means Jesus will come, you will still have it in your head. And the second thing that this, this documentary said is that the effect of it is recorded in the brain. And it sets the brain in comparison to every time you have a sexual act. So you are comparing it to what you saw in the video, and then you say, this person is not compatible. And then you compare it and you say, this man is not compatible. Why? Something has recorded. So we should avoid the lost of pornography. Uh, if you avoid this, if you avoid um, fornication, you will discover that if you get into marriage, there will be nothing like we are not sexually compatible. Because you have never practiced it with anybody else. This is your first person. You are both new. So you are both a uh, work in progress. But many a times you find out that people who have had experiences, they complain about incompatibility. So Paul is saying to us that we should avoid this. We should avoid the passion of manipulation and exposure. That's resisting lust of passion. Resist the passion of manipulation and exposure. After you have finished dressing. Resist that. And it's not only women. If me too, I come next week now, which I'm going to do. And I put on um, what is the turtle neck, that tight one, that gripping one, and with my six packs. And then I come up stage, say, as I was telling you, what am I doing? Exposure. Trying to entice people. Paul is saying, resist that. Okay, some of you did not see the six packs. You need to be in the spirit. <laughs> it's a spiritual thing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So you need to resist these things. Resist this kind of indecent exposure. There's a way our daddy says it. He said a believer should dress elegantly. Classy. There's no time you will see Queen Elizabeth in our, day, in our days that you will not admire her. And what is she wearing? You will never see her knee. But whatever she wears, you say, wow. Wow. That's elegance. That's beauty. That's how a believer should appear. Not in exposure. So Paul, because those things will feed lust. And when he feeds lust, he ends up in immorality. Passion for sexual conquest. When boys are growing up, and if they are not in the right group, that's what they compare. Oboyafa now, ah, that girl in uh, row two. <laughs> I've done my own. Oh. That girl in row three. I've done my own. That girl in road four, uh, I pity you. You see, when we were in the singles fellowship, before we got married, there was this couple they called 
the Jack Bulus. They are counselors for singles and married. And they did an illustration concerning this sexual conquest. The woman came with a stamp and an envelope. Do we know postal stamp? Okay, this is the old school. This one, they know postal stamp. So postal stamp, the woman came with it. And he said, when you think you are having sexual conquest, this is what is happening to your life. She put saliva on the postal stamp, pasted it on the envelope, and removed it. And then she did it the second time. She removed it. By the time she did it the third time, the stamp could not hold again. If that's all that happened, we will say, okay, carry gum and put. But she now showed us something that is very profound. We saw on the envelope part of the stamp. And we saw on the stamp part of the envelope. Listen, you that you, are think, you think you are having sexual con conquest, you are picking things from people you are sleeping with. You see, if it's a physical thing that you are picking, they can treat it. We will send you to a doctor. Eh? They will treat all those guys, know this, guy know that. But if it's a spiritual thing, oh, sh somebody whose destiny is going this way, and you've gone with the person, you are going. Sexual conquest. So Paul is saying that we should avoid all this lust. And then Paul also said in verse 6, Please go with me to verse 6. And that in this matter, no one should wrong or take advantage of a brother or a sister. Do not take advantage of brethren. Sexual immorality as a way of taking from the people who engage in adultery and fornication. The end of this kind of lifestyle is that he either takes away the husband from the wife or the wife from the husband. And for that brother or that sister, it takes away your innocence. So Paul is saying, if you know, do not take advantage of your brother. You see, we are, all of us, we are not at the same level. Are we together? We are not. So help your brother. Help your sister. Do not take advantage. Oh, is it sister? It's very hard to mention sister. Is this sister something? Ah, I heard that she's very loose. And then you say, eh, is that so? Okay, let me try. That is taking advantage of that brother. And Paul said, the Lord will avenge. The Lord will punish those who do that. What should you do with your brother? Help them. Pray for them. Lift them up in prayer. Now, the, the, the thing about immorality is that the Lord will punish all those who commit such sin as we told you and warned you before. Immorality will be punished. Is somebody with me this morning? Nobody will get away with it. Immorality will be punished, either physically or otherwise. It will be punished. There are consequences for these things. No matter how much immorality is glamorized through television, movies, advertisement, and promotion, and the list is endless, society does not make the rules. God makes the rule. So Paul is saying here that the Lord will punish all those who commit such sins as we told you and warned you before. Now, you, you, you keep on wondering what is happening on our screens. They tell you this movie is action movie. But somehow, in the clips, there must be a sexual act in between. Why? They are projecting. And that's why we need to be careful. If you have watched any movie in 20, towards the end of 2023 and 2024, if it's a foreign movie that has to do with anything from Hollywood, they will promote gay. 
they, it's not that they will, except the Christian movie. The ones that are the secular ones, they must promote it. And before, it used to come in between. You know, maybe you just, as you are watching the movie, they will show you a guy that is holding a guy and, you know, there's this passionate conversation. But now, it's from the beginning of the film. You see it. Even if it's action film, the hero is gay. So that means, you, if you are not careful, that's what you will watch throughout the movie. A very fine movie. The storyline, very great. But there's a projection. And God is saying he will punish all those who are involved in it. So you see an advert of toothbrush. And then there's a half-naked woman. Excuse me. What should they be showing in the advert of toothbrush? So what has this one got to do with it? You know how they do that leg. In advert, they are telling you to buy Ferrari, and there's a woman in bikini doing that. They are projecting it, and God says he will punish. God has given the intimacy and the preciousness of sex for only married. Please, our young one, listen and listen to me very well. You avoid a lot of trouble in your future if you can avoid intimacy now. If you can avoid it now, you have, you have really dealt with issues of the future. And when I'm saying this, I'm not talking to only the girls, especially the boys. See, it pains me when a boy has finished everybody in the city. It's now going to the village to look for a virgin. They will give you your counterpart in the village. Somebody that is like you, that lives in the village, you will meet that person. So we need to. God only permits the issue of sex in where? I can't hear you. In where? So if you want to have sex, and listen to me, let me not go there. Because if you get into marriage because of sex, that's when you discover that you have to pay NEPA bill. <laughs> then you discover that you have to feed another mouth. Yes. Then you discover that when she gets pregnant, you need to pay for antenata. So don't get into marriage because of... Say it now. Don't get into marriage because of sex. But make sure you are matured and then get married. And then, uh, this thing that is shocking you, ask the married people. <laughs> ask them. Ask them. Call uncle, that uncle that you are close with. Say, how many times are you intimate in a year? And see what he will do. When was Valentine? February. Okay, I think, no, we didn't even do anything that day. Uh, ask mommy, ask mommy. This thing that is pushing you, you have a lifetime. So wait for it. Tell somebody beside you, if they are a young adult, tell them, wait for it. Please look for a young adult, tell them, wait for it. In our own language, can you also tell them it will tire you? <laughs> so God makes it very clear that when it comes to sex, it's not for anyone outside marriage. And then immorality is not of God. Verse 7 and 8. Immorality is not for, of God. For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Therefore, anyone who rejects this instruction does not reject a human being, but God, the very God who gives you the Holy Spirit. Immorality is not for God, but holiness is. God has called us into holiness. He did not call us to live unclean lives. 
He did not give us license to live a riotous life. See immorality as a sin against God. You may reject this command as old school or old fashioned, but the scripture says that anyone who rejects this rejects God. So what's our instruction this morning? Live in purity. Are we together? Let's live a life of purity. So in the second place, Paul speaking again, told the Thessalonians to live a life of love, verse 9 to 10. Now about your love for one another, we do not need to write to you. For you yourself have been taught by God to love each other. And in fact, you do love all of God's family throughout Macedonia. Yet we urge you, brothers and sisters, to do more and more. A life of love is portrayed as essential amongst believers in the Christian community. This passage emphasizes the importance of brotherly love or affectionate love for one another within the body of Christ. Paul challenged the Thessalonians to love as God has taught them. What kind of love is God's love? What kind of love is that if you interpret it? It's a sacrificial love. So Paul is saying that to your brother, to your sister, show sacrificial love. Let me tell you, if there is ever a time that the church needs to overdo love, this is the time. Are we together? If there is a time that you need to show love, this is the time. Because this is the time where the economy seems to be biting hard. I say seems because it's not the same for everybody. So I won't say it's biting hard. For those who are in the kingdom, God will always make a way for you. So this is the time to go extra mile for your brother. There's an occasion at uh, Newi, and we say, please, brethren, our brother is burying his great-grandfather. Please, let's go and support him. Say, Rabba Gudu, how much is the transport to Newi? 7,000. Chai. I'll call him. I'll call him. I'll call him and greet him. No. You know why? The challenge is that your brother who is going to Newi may be counting on his church brethren to be his own group. Your brother here has other brother and Newi. And you know the way we do our things in Africa. We have canopies with our names on it. Paul is saying, show this kind of sacrificial love, even in this kind of situation. Let it be that when people gather around, me too, I have somebody. And listen to me, church. If you don't go to other people's own, if it comes to your own, don't expect magic. So you sow and then you reap. Are we together? You see, the church is at a stage where if you notice, people are burying their aged parents. They are burying those ones. And then the younger ones are getting married. And then those that are married are doing child dedication. This is the time to rally around your brothers. Paul says, show brotherly love. He's, he's saying God has taught you. God has taught you how to love. So show that love. I remember when we got married, we were staying in Lagos. My father-in-law is at Oyo. So it was at the tick of the Abacha. Yes, now, it's Oyo. Oyo. <laughs> My father-in-law is from the Alafi family. I know my father-in-law. Don't confuse me. <laughs> After 26 years, I won't know. <laughs> so, it was at that point where Abiola and Abacha issue was on and there was fuel scarcity. We don't have people in Oyo. All our people are in Lagos. So, 
well, okay, let's go. My company gave me a coaster bus. Her school gave her a coaster bus. That one was filled, so we thought that was all. And when we arrived there, all of a sudden, we saw this luxurious bus coming filled up to the brim. <laughs> you know Lagos boy now. <laughs> As I saw them, I said, yes, I have people. My people are here. And when they came down, they knew that people arrived. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So those are the things that Paul is talking about here. He said the Thessalonians, they've shown that law so much so that all over Macedonia, they know. In fact, by the way you are behaving, they say, you are from the church of Paul in Thessalonia. They say, yes, uh -huh, we know. That's how you show love. Can people say that concerning TVCBC? Yes. That when you see you, the way you rally around people, they'll say, ah, which church do you attend? Say TVC. Ah, uh, we know them. They will be here. So Paul is saying that. Now, if he has said that and he has kept quiet, it would have been okay. That he's saying that the Lord showed them. But he said they must grow in love. I started wondering at this point, what was Paul saying? These people, their love has, has engulfed the whole of Macedonia. And then you are saying they should grow in love. That tells me one thing. There's no limit to love. Church, are you listening? Yeah. There's no limit to how much you can love your brother. There's no limit. So you must grow. And that, that means this year, I don't know what is your target of your love bank, but can you increase your deposit? Hello, church. Can you increase it? The, 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 last year, what I did as, as an indication of love to my brethren is this amount. This year, I'm going to grow it. That's what Paul is saying. So this year, we must grow in love. We must grow in love. Amen. There is never too much brotherly love within the church. We must therefore grow more and more. Please, after service, if you won't do anything today, please, can you walk up to somebody, greet them, and ask them, how are you coping? How are you fearing? Hope all is well with you. Are we together? That's how it begins. Many of us were afraid that, mm, Pastor does not know my experience. The last time I did that, the brother unburdened all his, all his debt upon me. Paul is saying, do it more and more. Hello? He's saying, do it how? More and more. Help your brother. Help your sister. God will help us in Jesus' name. And this morning, finally, believers should live to please God by living a life of purpose. By living a life of purpose. Verse 11 and 12. And to make it your ambition to lead a quiet life, you should mind your own business and work with your hands, just as we told you, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders and so that you will not be, you will not be dependent on anybody. The life of purpose involves engaging in honest labor and being productive being productive member of the society, rather than being dependent on others for one's need. By living in this manner, believers not only fulfill their earthly responsibility, but also present a positive witness to those outside the faith, earning the respect of others and promoting the gospel. Now, Paul was writing to these people and saying that, thank God you will avoid sexual immorality. Thank God you will show love. But there's one more thing. You need to live a life of purpose. And he told them as well how to live this life of purpose. Number one is to live a quiet life. Live a quiet life. How does he apply to the Thessalonians? They were under persecution. So Paul is saying 
Absorb your persecution and project the gospel. Be quiet about your persecution, but promote the gospel. By extension to us here, yeah, can you live a quiet life even on your street? Some of us, if you go and live or you leave the street, people will know. They will know. It's either they will know by you not coming home at 3 a.m. And you, you know some people, they like coming in at those short, short hours. You know those short, short hours, like 1, like 2, like 3 a.m., those short, short ones, like 4. And when they come, there's one that used to be on us. I think that person must have parked away. Aha, uh -huh, you see now, Reverend even bear with That one, once they come around three, Paul! Paul is saying, live a quiet life. So live that kind of life that people are comfortable around you. Some of us, we don't talk, but the way we appear is too loud. Yes, it's too loud. People are even afraid to approach you. He said, live a quiet, be silent. Live a quiet life. Let people see you as somebody that they can stay with. And then he says, mind your own business. I wonder why Paul is telling believers here, members of the church, to mind their own business. Church members, believers, say, mind your own business. Do not be a busybody. Do not be the critic of the town. Mm. See what she's wearing. Are you a member of this church? Madam, look at yourself first. Mind your own business. If you want to correct somebody, approach the person in a manner that the person will receive your correction. Ah, I remember in Lagos, there was somebody that did that for a girl. And the way I, I, don't, I do not support the way the girl answered, but the girl answered in response to the way the woman approached it. This girl came to church dressed in a way that, ah, myself with all the Holy Spirit, I knew I needed prayer. She came to church dressed provocatively. Everything was pointing everywhere. And one of the women said, hey, you, come here. Why did you come to church like this? And the girl looked at her and said, my parents saw me at home. Do you think that girl will reply, respond to her like that if she had called her, sat her down, and said, my daughter, this dress you wore is very beautiful, but it's not good for this occasion. You see, if we are having a dance party, or we are going clubbing, or we want to go to the beach, uh -huh. but if you wear this one, then you need a jacket on it. So that that way, you, you see, you, you, are, you are very beautiful, but you need to watch how you dress. What will the girl say? Thank you, ma. But Paul is saying those kind of people should do what? Mind their own business. You, 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 you. Every time you come to church, everything you are wearing, we are seeing it. Uh-huh. Did I borrow money from you to buy it? Mind your own business. In fact, Jesus describing it, he said, you are looking at the speck in the eyes of a man, but you have, that it was that, what, that plank, what do they call the size? That one that they use for facing board. <laughs> eh? <laughs> eh? Okay. That 12 by whatever. You have it hanging on your own eye. You didn't see that one, but you are seeing the speck. Jesus said, mind your own business. Focus on your own life and your own affair. 
Have you heard the story of that counselor, marriage counselor, counseling other people until his own marriage broke? Yes, now. Mind your own life and your own affairs. Was there for everybody. Hey, this person, ah, they need help. Oh, they need help. He's gone. They need help. He's gone. And then he went one day, and when he came back, the woman is gone. Get busy doing something. One of the things that makes people to meddle in other people's affairs is because they are jobless. Thank God for Nigeria. Even our aged ones are still engaged in businesses. But over there in UK, you have those women that stay near the glass. They are peeping. Everything that happens on the street, they know. So one child is carry, crying the next door. They'll pick it from 911. There is a child crying next door. My neighbor has left his child. Busy body. But in Nigeria, you have old women. They are in the market. In fact, one mama, <laughs> I was surprised when they said she's going to be 70 this year. And she's still going to the market. Very, if you say, mommy, let's walk together, you will breathe. You will be panting. Because mommy is going shako, 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 shako. Mind you, get something doing so that you focus. And finally, Paul said, work with your own hands. If there is any time that you need multiple streams of income, hey, listen to me and listen to me very well. It was yesterday. Not even now. Work with your own hands. There are too many things that you can do. Some of the things that we jack back to go and do, we don't want to do it here. Uh, that your brother that is sending you $200 every two, two months. If he tells you what he's doing, <laughs> you will carry the money and frame it. <laughs> Say, brother, this is, no, I won't spend this kind of money. I will frame it. He said, work with your own hands. Be diligent. Do something. There is something you can do. You see, the, <laughs> When I was still dilly-dallying whether to answer the call, I went into business. So I went, I met this Indian man, and the man said, Henry, there is money in Nigeria everywhere you turn to. There is money, there is money. <laughs> everywhere you turn to, there is money. Everywhere there is money, there is money. I said, <laughs> I think his, his name was Rajiv. I said, Raj, what do you mean? Is it everywhere there is money, there is money? And it's true, those guys are making money out of the things that we refuse to do. Engage yourself, do something. Do something. I've told you of the testimony of one of our guys, one of our senior pastors who had somebody that always come to him to beg for money. And after a while, the man said, no, you can do something. And the guy said, what can I do? He said, go to oil mill on Wednesday. You can do wheelbarrow. I just learned that one. That that's what they call it, wheelbarrow. And the man said, wheelbarrow. He said, yes, go. So according to the brother's testimony, he went the first day, and he was shy. You know, he's a graduate now. A graduate with 2-1. How can a graduate with 2-1? be carrying will by road, but a graduate with two more can beg money. Dignity. So he went the first Wednesday. He just stood there, looking at people, carrying and dropping. And he came back, and the brother asked him, the pastor asked him, how was it? He said, I couldn't get myself to do it. He said, go back again. So the next Wednesday, he went back again. And after standing a while, he approached somebody, can I help you to carry it? He said, okay. So he carried and dropped, and they gave him money, and he looked at it. You see, there's a way you look at the money you work for. <laughs> if you want to understand, 
let your son or your daughter start working. And then you tell them to buy something. Hey! They will tell you, this is my money. So, the one we have been spending in this house, <laughs> you don't want to spend that one. My son did some, um, what do they call that thing? Uh, not IT. Um, he was a shopkeeper, sales boy. That was long ago. Immediately he finished his work. So when he brought the money, we now said, go and buy something. He said, I said, from your money? He said, no, this is my money. <laughs> oh, now you know the value of money. So the brother saw money and he was, he was happy. So he targeted the next Wednesday. It was very early. And it started. And you know, there's a way an educated person will carry load for you. It will be different. He will not put tomato under and then put bag of rice on it. His senses will tell him and how to arrange it well so that it does not fall off. So he did that. And then there was this interview that he had to attend. And he said, sir, I don't have any work experience. What do I put? The man said, put logistics. Logistics? Yes, your strength. Ability to carry goods from one point to the other without damage. Ah. Next one. Ability to arrange commodities in a way that is accessible at the needed time. Okay? Ability. And he listed this thing. You call it wheelbarrow. Give it a fanciful name, logistics. Get to work, brethren. There's something you can do. There's something you can do. See, there are people who cannot clean their house, not because they are dirty, though they don't have time. And you, you are somebody that can say, please, I'm available. School is not, I've just finished my work. I'm available. Please, if you want to do that job, see me, I will post it on our platform. Please, I can clean house. I can wash clothes. I can babysit. Those are things that you can engage in. And when you will put it in your CV, you will not call it babysitting, providing health care. Health care, seeing to the well being of underage, ability to prepare. Uh, by the time we form it for you, eh? It will make sense. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So engage yourself in something active. Are we together, church? Let it not be there, that there's somebody in our midst that is jobless. And all he does is to say, um, Brother David, I want to see you after service. And then as he's approaching Brother David, he says, Brother Mika, please wait for me. <laughs> Brother David, please, I just need 2,000. 2,000. Brother Mika, don't go. 2,000. So, <laughs> TP. <laughs> They've approached Daddy. <laughs> I need TP. To go home and get to work tomorrow. And then he approaches a maker, another 2,000. And then he approaches a um, barrister. Though that one will ask a lot of interrogative <laughs> questions, but he will still get the 2,000. And in a, in a week, on Sunday, that person has made 6,000. Do you think that person will work? And there are those who shift their base. That's they are in Baptist today, they're in Anglican next week, they're in Redeemed the week after. By the time they come back, they look for another person. So by the time they go around, the whole year is settled. Religious beggar. Paul is saying, work with your own. If you don't know what to do, see me after service. I will find work for you. You will see work. Is it work? You will see work. It's whether you can work it. That's the issue. 
So this morning, the Lord has helped us. As we look at a life of purity, a life of love, and a life of purpose. Let's round up. Let us take to heart the importance of living to please God in every aspect of our lives. Recognizing that our thoughts, words, and actions have the power to bring glory to God and positively impact those around us. Shall we go to the Lord in prayer? Can you lift up your voice and thank God for today's word? Thank God for the word that he has sent to us today. Appreciate him for the grace of the word. Also this morning, if you are here and you are struggling from any form of addiction, because when it comes to the issue of the life of purity, it goes beyond just sexual immorality. You are struggling with an addiction. Is it pornography? Is it alcohol? Is it drugs? The Lord is here to set you free. Can you cry unto the Lord? And ask that the instrument that the enemy uses in luring you into that sin, that instrument be destroyed. Ask for God's help this morning. Ask for the help of God. What is that which you are struggling with? Lift up your voice and ask for help. It may be impurity in the way you dress, it may be impurity in what you eat, in the way you eat. It may even be in the words of your mouth. Profanity is not a problem. Ask for God for cleansing. Can you also pray that God will help you to grow in love? In love towards God and in love towards your brother. Lord, help me to grow more and more in love. Help my love bank to increase. Are you here this morning? And you are saying, I do not have anything to do. Can you pray for help? Ask that the Lord will open your eyes so that you will see the trade, the business that you can get involved with. Thank the Lord because you shall live your life in dignity and in purity. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you because your word has come with the power daring to fulfill that which has been spoken. Lord, for as many that are asking for your help, O oh God, let grace rest upon them for transformation in the name of Jesus. Is there a brother here, a sister here that is struggling with an addiction? Today, we break the hold of that addiction in the name of Jesus Christ. We set you free by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, our Father, for your blessing rest upon your people. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise God. We thank God for this beautiful Sunday. Thank him for his word. We pray to live by the word in the name of Jesus. We pray that this word will not stand against us, but it will stand for us. To checkmate us whenever we want to fall into sin. In Jesus' name. Don't be condemned. 
Just know that your sin has been forgiven and keep living in righteousness. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You are first time as now. Today is your first time of coming here. Let's see you wave. Oh, you're welcome, sir. God bless you. Please stand up. Protocol officers, let's have the books. Please stand up. Please put those around. Welcome them well. Okay. God bless you. This is the Victory Community Baptist Church, 36 Fleming Avenue. We're sure you enjoyed the message. Most of us were here during the service. We pray that God will bless you and give you a testimony in the name of Jesus. Welcome to church. Before the close of the service, you'll be called upon. The church will pray for you and you will be taken to our VIP uh, mansion. <laughs> our lounge, VIP lounge. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Um, accountability for women is not holding tomorrow. There's no accountability for women. So, all leaders should stay at home. Prepare for next week. Prepare for the outpouring this week. Let's pray for the outpouring. Praise the Lord. Men, they are doing theirs tomorrow. Youth Ministry Power 220i, they are meeting today, immediately after the service. It's not 4 p.m. So, parents, just hang around. Don't go anywhere. We are going to hold your children. Those of you that used to run home, don't worry, we'll stand by the door today. Sister Belemas, one is sitting beside you, so don't let that person go. Make sure you hold all of them. We will wait. We used to hang around normally. After service, all of us will be gisting everywhere. Today, don't run. Just allow the children be in church. Enjoy themselves. They will all go back home. Praise the Lord. If you have the children between the age of uh, 18, 13 to 20, 22, 13 to 22, don't let them go home. Stay here. They won't go and come back. You know, Tifa is high now. They won't go and come back. We'll just stay in church and enjoy ourselves. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The outpouring 2023. The outpouring 2023. The outpouring 2023. Oh. I'm taking us back. Let me come forward. The outpouring 2024. Jesus. The Jesus of 2023 is still the Jesus of 2024. This Jesus. The Jesus of 2022 is still the Jesus of 2024. This same Jesus. He has not changed. He will not change. He can never change. But that situation will change. That position will change. Your testimony will change. Because this same Jesus is here again. I don't know what you think about it, but I know my testimony will change. It can't be the same. I cannot call on his name and end up in shame. This year, it will change. In the name of Jesus. And the person that is coming this year, you can see this handsome man. You are just, when you see him that day, you will know that he's really handsome. Praise the Lord. The Reverend Dr. Robert Obineke Oparanta is the guest minister for that day. And that is our very own conference president. This same Jesus is here already. It's just for you to walk into the hall and receive your blessing. Don't wait for Wednesday. He has started manifesting himself. So it's not Wednesday that he's starting. The aspiring of 2023 is still flowing down to be capped up this year. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The time is Wednesday, 5 p.m. Thursday, 5 p.m. Friday, 5 p.m. Then Sunday, 8 a.m. Don't miss it. Sunday is one service, so make sure you come early. If not, you will see it under the canopy of love. Offering, please. Let's get our offerings. These ones are for the cars. How many of us have cars here? Let me see your hand. If you know you have cars, you have cars and you want it, please, protocol officers, give it to them. We need to put them in our cars hmm? to announce this event. Brakintola, please hold this one as you are going to be giving it to them. As many that are willing to put in their cars to announce the event. We gave you a flyer. Please don't keep it. Invite someone. 
10% increase this year. 10% increase. The outpouring is a form of evangelism. So please come with someone. Goyi is part of the outpouring. Come with someone for this program. God will bless all of us in Jesus' name. Watch your screen. We have the account details for the offerings and the tithes. Please transfer your monies to that account. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The burial appreciation of prayers and appreciation for the deacons of the Victory Community Baptist Church. Prayers and appreciation for the deacons of the Victory Community Baptist Church comes up Sunday, 17th, during at pouring service. Come with your heart filled with love and prayers for us. This is the first of its kind in church. So just come and say, God, we thank you because we have these deacons in church. We pray that you will keep them longer than they expected in the name of Jesus. So come that day with a heart of prayer and thanksgiving to God. Praise the Lord. Various ceremonies of late pa okora for comes up Saturday, 23rd March, 10 a.m. at Arochuku. Service of song holds next week, Tuesday, the 19th of March, here in Rumasi by 5 p.m. Service of song next week, Tuesday. Burial ceremony, Saturday, 23rd. The burial of late Mrs. Orubele holds Friday, 5th April, 2024 at Imo State. Service of songs holds here 26th Tuesday, March, 2024. Here in Rumo Masi by 5 p.m. Praise the Lord. Let's keep praying for these families that God will grant them safety and grant them the hearts to bear the loss in the name of Jesus. Potako Central Baptist Association first quarter meeting holds here in the Victory Community Baptist Church 23rd of March. Time is 9 a.m. The theme is Stewardship of the Earth. Stewardship of the Earth. The preacher is Reverend Dr. Inkem Osigwe. Reverend Dr. Inkem Osigwe is the one coming, our former chairman of the Rivers Baptist Conference. Praise the Lord. Pledge towards worship building is still ongoing. Please don't forget to bring in your pledges as, you, as we continue to build the church. Praise God. Senior citizens are all asked to wait behind after the service, immediately after the service for a brief meeting signed by your leader that the Joseph Airy, praise the Lord. Don't forget, equipping track classes still holds after the service this morning upstairs. Don't forget to go to your classes. Equipping track classes holds this morning, immediately after the service at the multipurpose. Praise the Lord. God bless all of us in Jesus' name. For those of us celebrating birthdays, we say congratulations. God bless you. Your anniversaries, God bless you. You had us opening, God bless you. And for more things that will come in this year, New Year, we say God bless you in the name of Jesus. Only congratulations is permitted in your life and your season this year. In the name of Jesus. No one will come to tell you sorry, but they will tell you congratulations, congratulations, congratulations in the name of Jesus. All of us will shout happy birthday for mommy, mommy okay, okay, okay. Happy birthday, man. Everybody say happy birthday. Yeah, it's good to celebrate birthdays. We'll continue to celebrate our senior citizens in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's time to give our offering, our tithe to the Lord. If you've transferred your home or you have your home here, please come forward. It's time to give our tithe. You have your tithe with you. Kindly come forward. If you've transferred your home, also come forward. Let's pray together. For those of us in front, just ask him that which you desire. Just tell him this morning.
Father, we thank you. Thank you for new season. Thank you for new season. Glory to your holy name. Be that exalted in Jesus' name. Almighty God, we are grateful because you are our God. Thank you because you change it not. Glory be to your holy name. Be that exalted in Jesus' name. Father, behold your children standing before you. We ask, Lord, let the gate and heavens of new season open unto them in the name of Jesus. New season of greatness, new season of abundance. Let it be their portion in the name of Jesus. Thank you because you are Lord. Glory to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we rise as we take the doxology together? Praise the Lord. Again, welcome to worship today. I do believe that we have enjoyed the flow of the Spirit and the Word in this service. Now, usually, we never try to defraud us of any opportunity to partner in the work of the gospel. The truth is that no one or one single denomination is sufficient to carry out the mandate of the Great Commission until its conclusion. So God raises bodies, people, organizations here and there, and as much as they ask us to partner with them, we do open the door for such opportunity to us to participate, to come into partnership in giving. Here we know of the BSN, Bible Society of Nigeria, and we also know of the Gideons, is that so? Yes. And then we also know of NEMA, National Evangelism uh, 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 Missions, okay? So when they come, we do open up the opportunity for such. And today, we have with us the Bible, uh, mem some members of the Bible Society of Nigeria that are going to talk with us to raise funds for the work that is done through their organizations so that we participate in it. So open up your heart. You may not have the money to give now, but then make up your mind that you are going to give. Amen. So it can get into our account and we will remit it. Whatever is sent, dedicated, we never touch it. We have always remained faithful to that. Okay, so please open your heart. Don't allow Nigeria to happen to you and to cheat you from eternal blessing. You hear me? Eternal blessing. Because when something is done for the work of missions, for the work of the gospel, we touch the very heart of God. Okay? So I want us to put our hands together as we welcome members of the Bible Society of Nigeria as they come to talk with us. You are welcome, sir. Sama. God bless you. You can come up. Yes. God bless you. Stop. You are welcome. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You are welcome. Yes. Yeah. Let me sincerely thank uh, 
my pastor and members of the pastoral team, the board or committee of deacons as some Baptist churches may wish to call them, uh, for this unique opportunity. I came here for service of song for my lossing sometime, and I began to make my contact, and I was made to know that, yes, <clears throat> The impression I had, which was a wrong one, a Bible society has not come here before, and I was corrected. No, we've been coming. I said, okay. Yes, okay, maybe our branch, that is Dio uh, Bozilari. Uh, they said, yes. I said, fine. But as an area, we've not been here before. And uh, thank God that after the contact, necessary contact and communication, here we are. I want to thank my pastor for his declaration that the church is open to work with other bodies. Uh, the church cannot do all the work alone and they need to partner with other bodies. We know we belong to a country, we belong to a, a, a system where a lot of persons are there for the name of God or church and do a lot of terrible things. But we are here, Bible Society of Nigeria. What do we do? We translate the Bible, we make the Bible available. As I'm talking to you, we have over 500 languages in Nigeria out of the 500 languages, only 27 are truly translated. So that means we still have a lot of work to do. And about 50 something or so are in various stages of completion. Other New Testament has been completed or some portion of the Bible has been translated. And this is what we do as Bible society. Long, long time ago, the church was directly involved in translating the Bible. And it takes them donkey years to do that. And the church said, no, we cannot. Let's do with our traditional work of evangelism, bringing people, to nurture them, to disciple them, and they go out. So Bible society was formed long, long ago. And since then, we've got quite a lot of improvement on translation. 27 translated the most current of them in this part of Nigeria. Rivers, we are rivers by side. I'm sorry. With me, is, uh, this is uh, Engineer Ombo. Is secretary of Padakot uh, Auxiliary. Uh, this is uh, our youth officer, hard working youth officer. The youth are working out. You will stay and meet with them so that you can be able to share with them. Uh, he is uh, Danagogo Amakri. This is uh, Christina Wokoma. She is uh, also Padakot Auxiliary. Two of us is entirely a part of this church. We are about this, you know. And uh, this work. We are working, but of course, my name is El Daumu Nayotamno. Uh, few people know me here, uh, but I know that my name is Oring Bem. Sorry, I'm not boasting because, uh, as far as the Royal Ambassador is concerned, after a youth is concerned, no Royal Ambassador will stand here without calling me because I'm a great grandfather. I started the Royal Ambassador from the West right. even youth and the rest of them. So, praise the Lord. So, uh, this is my church, and I want to tell you that. Our Baptist churches are helping, are actually helping for this work. Reverend George started it. Reverend Lockhart came in, and me as small, small boy like me, I'm also working in their state. So I want to thank you for this opportunity. 27 languages we have. In River State here, we have Okreka and Calabari. These are the most recent Bibles that we have launched. It takes 53 years to successfully organize Calabari Bible. 50 years for Kreka. You know, in those days, people are doing it. The technology is not like that. But I'm talking to you now. In this, our area, we are working on Ogbe APA Bible. Ogbe APA Bible. The New Testament have been launched. And we're also working on Kolokoma Bible. They are still going on. It takes now, present cost now, it takes 140 million naira to finance a Bible project. That's what it's going to take between 8 and 10 years. Now, the Kolokuma and the PA Bible is done very fastly because the former president, I'm sorry, I'm taking all your time. The former president, Jonathan, agreed to sponsor these two Bibles. Well, you know what he did? He brought out money and he recruited people, five, five from both sides. And that made the New Testament Bible to be completed within five years. The Old Testament is almost completed. As I'm talking to you, a Lame Bible is worked on. They already have their New Testament Bible. The first Bible so translated in Nigeria is Efek Bible. Some people say Zero Bible, you know, they are the major tribe or Hausa. No, it's Zero, it's Efek. 
Mary Celeste, she's single handedly to it. You know, our missionaries in those days, those who are familiar, the more and the rest of them, they did quite a lot for the mission work. So what do we do? Now, as an area, we have a lot of projects. The National Tool has a lot of projects. We have a deaf Bible. We have a language, library, language lab in Ibadan. Language very, very, in fact, the first in West Africa is here or for Bible translation. We also have audio Bibles in various languages. Our Bibles are also, in, you can Google them, you can get them online, this translated Bible. So what do we do? We need the support of the churches. Last year, but for the intervention of uh, Calabari Bible Translation Committee, Rivers Bias area would have been scrapped or merged with other acquired bomb. And a reverend, a bishop from the Anglican, early 80s, worked for Bible, Rivers Bias to be created. And Bible Society has our own target. We must distribute Bible. Distribution simply means you must distribute, sell at least 7,500 Bibles in a year. As Christian state as we are, we could not do it. Our churches are not patronizing Bible society to buy Bibles, and they go to a real market. They buy where they ring bell. You buy New Testament Bible for your son. At year one, one page will go just like that. By the time you finish year five, five Bibles. But what you use to buy one Bible, you will use even more than that. So we have that challenge. We also have fund. We have these issues. As I'm talking to you, like me, I don't hide my age. I'm over 60 years. Some person may not know. I'm over, in fact, I'm born 1960. So this year, November, will make me 64. We need young people. When they wanted to elect me chairman, I said, no, I won't do it. He said, no, you have to do it. You've been working, you've been working. Now, those who are working with us, most, the average age of those of officers in Bible society, they are 50. In fact, this is the youngest area youth officer. So what is happening? I'm going to complete my tenure, two tenure, by the next three years. And what happened? They are telling me, that chairman, the way you are working, who will succeed you? We need young people. I'm happy young people are here. Youth, please take up challenges in this. Bible Society have membership form. The various categories of membership, we have the most highest, the very highest is special life membership. That one you enroll with 15,000. Special membership for couple, 15,000. Single is 10,000. Then you have the other life membership, which is uh, 5,000 and 2,005. I'm sure this is my church. We don't have a member yet, but I'm sure today the narrative will change. Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. Now, people are saying, what are you doing for us? The Bible Society had questions. Okay, for the special membership, we are going to have an insurance policy. Of course, the insurance, the special membership also an annual renewal of 12,000 every year. A renewal every year. And as you are doing it, you are making, you are promoting the work. Some people are looking for where to spend for God's work. So this is an area we are calling on you to please become, we are going to drop the funds with our, our lead pastor, the pastor in charge. Please try to be a member. You try to act like that. Some churches you will go, they will collect offering. When they collect offering, sometimes they share it. I'm telling you, a lot of things are happening. Sometimes they will not even send you to Bible society. But that is where we, that is where we are. That is where we are. We have a lot of things that are, are going on. They will collect the offering and when they, they share it. But it's not supposed to be so. I'm, I'm happy our pastor said, donate. If you just donate, even there's one that I say, pastor, one that I into the church account, but it's Bible, Bible, and he said he will remit it. And we like that kind of uh, encouragement. So well, let me once again thank you for this real opportunity. I know that I, I was saying, hey, today that we are coming here, today is supposed to be a mission week of prayer. I know that the thing can go on all that time. I'm happy for receiving us. Some churches, I'll keep on calling, reminding. I just came here, dropped the letter, and that's all. My members at the time, they said, ah, see you closing prayer. I said, no, don't worry. They will call us. And here we are. So I want to thank you for this opportunity. Please support Bible society. It's very, very important. Patronize our Bible. They may be expensive. For instance, now, I went to Faith Baptist Church, Reverend Sigre Church, to talk about Bibles. They should buy Bible. At that time, October last year, Bible was costing 199.50 kobo. 
one thousand naira like that to reverse Sanda. This common to secondary school. And the church pastor said, No, it can't be the fifteen naira, please. Our members will buy two, two thousand. And members, many of them raise up their hand, request for Bible. As soon as we reach office, signal has come from uh, Lagos. Price of Bible is now three thousand naira. You know why? Is it dollar? Dollar. You know, dollar, three thousand naira. But because I've already told the church, and I make sure I give them at the whole price, I did it. I did not say because okay, let no, I, because I've made the church and they've paid. So this one, this order, I just come. I still give them at that price. So that's the, the, the now reverse and uh, the one. This edition is about three thousand six hundred naira now. That's what it costs. You go to market, maybe more cheaper. Like I talk about the durability. So once again, I want to thank you and pray that you will continue to support Bible. We need to have our life members conference and the rest of them. We've never met you, but I know that this year we we'll send invitation. We we'll invite one or two persons here to be part of it. It will take place at Okreka. We raise funds. Like I was saying, they raised three million. Bible Society said since we can't meet up our target, they gave us okay, let's pay three million naira. And if you look at it, that was the, so I approached one of the primates, Lutheran Church, is in a, I said, please, sir, help us. All. And they loan us three million naira. I told them we are going to pay this money, soft loan, between January and October. And that has made us to remain as an area. If not, what you would have here would have emerged to acquire bomb or Delta State. Reverse Bayasa. Our work in Bayasa is almost zero. I was there, I've talked to some ministers, some bishops. I was the first Baptist church in Igua. The pastor said, no, they will try. They are going to do something. So I'm happy to be here. And thank you, my pastor, giving me free. Somebody is not there, even tapping me, but I'm conscious of it, so I have to stop. Thank you, and God bless. <laughs> so let me have uh, hand over some of our magazines. Our magazines now for all special members are sent through online. These are very old edition, but the word of God, no matter how old it is, it is still yay, yay and fresh. So I want to hand over some of the forms to him. And also, please, give, it, give, give her the calendar first. Take the good photograph. I want to publish it. So I want to hand over some of the forms, some of the magazines to my pastor and my father in the Lord. Thank you. So please, members can meet him later and fill the form, the magazine. Let me also hand over our calendar to you. Uh, 2024 Bible Society calendar. Our calendars are always out every October. Now we have completely exhausted, but I said no, we must bring one for this church. Thank you very much, my pastor. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We so much appreciate you. Church, the Bible Society of Nigeria does a lot of work. And uh, one of the challenges that they are going to face and keep facing is the issue of the indigenous languages. Because why it takes so long to translate and complete the work of a Bible is that many of these languages are never reduced into writing. They have existed at, as oral, at oral level. Now they have to find the alphabets and create them. Are you seeing that? So they have to get traditional speakers and begin to learn the tongue and create the alphabet because it is alphabets that create words. Yes, so you can imagine what they have to go through. It's like studying linguistics and then going to find the source of things, the historical background, and know how to translate things properly. Okay, I know this because that of my language, you know, in Kaduna has been done. Okay, and it is quite an appreciable job. Now, if you say God is all-knowing, don't it reduce the image of God in your life when he cannot speak your language? Come on. Think. Is God all-knowing? Yes. Then he should be able to speak your language. So if you do not have the Bible in your language, God does not know your language. He's not all-knowing. You hear me? So for you to make us know that God knows you and knows your language, pay for the Bible in your language to be translated. So that people, without go, trying to struggle for English and whatsoever, will read the Bible in their native language and have that native understanding. It doesn't have to go through another barrier of interpretation in English. You know, once we are doing things in English, it goes through barriers. 
okay, you are trying to decode it from the Calabari person you are, from the Equeye person that you are, from the Equeye person that you are, into, into English and see, this is awesome work. Let us show appreciation for it, please. So we start collecting the money now and then those who are making promise will, will send it to the church account. So where are our ushers? Please appreciate this work. They are helping us to be literary. You understand? Making us to learn to read in our native languages and learn to appreciate God in our native language. One day I was, my, my cousin who is a minister sent me a portion of scripture in my own native language. When I heard it, I laughed. <laughs> you know? So I, I was looking at the thing. I cannot read it. But because it was the audio, I was hearing it. I said, oh, okay, this is what it means. Okay, okay, okay. It is awesome responsibility, awesome work. And please, the church cannot afford to be so poor in not sponsoring its own project. Or oh, do you want an allergy to sponsor this work for us? Say, God forbid. Thank you. You have to say, God forbid. Not somebody from the outside, unless God makes that person to be so. It is our own project concerning our own work with our own Jesus. We need to learn to sponsor it. So give what you can give today and make your pledges concerning how you are going to give. Amen. So when you sign up for membership, it helps you in contributing annually or periodically towards the cause. It is a cause that will bring you blessing of eternity. I know that in a year, you can waste more than 10,000 naira. Check how much you do waste. Okay, now instead of wasting that 5,000, 10,000, why not give it, sow it into eternity, into an eternal project? I'm just saying to us, the ob ob obvious, our God is omniscient. He knows all things. He should be able to speak our indigenous language. In other words, we should be able to read the Bible in our indigenous language. We should appreciate that. May God bless us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, sirs. Thank you, ma. Thank you so much. Now, we, we are going to pray. We're going to pray for Bible Society of Nigeria. And you see, it's another form of missions work. Amen. Amen. And you may wonder how, as if we spoke before, you know, I opened my eyes in, as a child in the home mission field of Shandam, home mission field of the Nigeria Baptist Convention in those days. Now, my father had a friend who was a missionary to Thief Land in uh, Benue State. One day, somebody challenged this daddy of mine and said, how do you want us to accept the Jesus you are preaching where he cannot speak thief? Listen to this story. So, Reverend Jatel, that's his real name, locked up himself and prayed. Within two weeks, after he consecrated, he said, prayed. Do you know what happened? He got out of that room and began to speak teeth clearly to the people. He was one of the pioneer missionaries of Baptist work in Teeth land. In those days, they call it Benue Plateau State. My father was in Plateau State. This friend of his was in Benue State. And that's how the work began to penetrate. God is a language-sensitive God. That's why on the day of Pentecost, we had them speak in our own tongue the various wonders of our God. Are you with me? So you can see the mission thing. God is about languages. We must speak it. We must translate it. We must reach out that way. So don't ever think it's a waste. I feel for it because I'm a, I'm a child of missions. You understand me? And please do with my excess. Hallelujah. Just accept me the way I am. I feel for this. When he takes the time to tell us we have how many languages and how many do we have translated and then we are Christians here comfortable in our jackets and suits and our fineries. Come on, we can sacrifice for the work to be done and we shall not stop sacrificing until this work is done. Hallelujah. So thank you for being in worship today. I call you into an eternal project as we partner with them as individuals, and you shall never lack your reward in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. It's a honest organization. I mean, it, it is a honest organization. They don't abuse their funds. They really work. They really work, and they really work. And may God bless Bible Society of Nigeria. May God bless its staff. 
May God continue to raise the kind of people you desire so that they will continue with the work. It's not just anybody. Somebody will think, oh, let, let me just join this organization so that I'll go around raising funds to spend. No. The people are, that I know from my own side to this side of BSN, they are people that are given to the task. All they need is our prayers and our support. Hallelujah. Okay, shall we pray for BSN? Say, Almighty God, we present to you Bible Society of Nigeria. Let this work continue. Supply all that they need. Use me to supply all that they need. Pray in the name of Jesus. Talk to God. Because it is a prayer from the, your heart, say it. Lord, use me. In any way you're going to use me, use me to meet this need. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, Almighty God, whatever is a hindrance to the progress of the work given to BSN, oh Father, solve it for them. Pray in the name of Jesus. Whatever will be a hindrance to the work given to BSN, Bible Society of Nigeria, Lord, help them, solve the problem for them. We want to see our languages being translated into the holy words of God so that we we'll access the voice of God in our own tongue, in our own language. God, provide help. In Jesus' name we pray. Pray and say, oh God, we pray for strength and wisdom for the staff members. Pray in the name of Jesus. We want them to be healthy. We want them to be strong. Ask God to help them. It's not easy to leave their own churches, to be visiting other churches to promote their ministry, which is also our ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Finally, let us pray, O oh God, touch the hearts of believers, your people, so that copies of the Bible will be bought from BSN people. Pray in the name of Jesus. You hear the need. They have the Bibles to sell at cheaper, at better quality. Well, God has to touch our hearts. Why can't we buy our own stuff when we know that it is genuine, it is original? We should not be buying from quack printers. Yes, it is the very word of God, but that which is printed by quackery sabotages the original workers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now open your eyes. We shall say three times aloud, God bless BSN, meaning Bible Society of Nigeria. Shall we go together? God bless BSN. Again, God bless BSN. And loudly, God bless BSN. Amen. God bless you, Ma. God bless you, sirs. You can have your seats. You are welcome. Thank you so much. We love you coming. Now, is there anyone worshiping with us for the first time as we close our service today? We want to recognize you. Just come to the front. We want to pray with you. Come to the front. We want to pray with you. So, you are, you are welcome. Please come to the front. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you so much. Don't think I'm ridiculing you. How can an old man be a youth? <laughs> it tells you the work that needs to be done. This is, not, this is an uncle, not a youth. <laughs> May God touch hearts of people. Some of us enter ministry quite young. I pray that God will touch the hearts of young people to see the needs to be in ministry. You, you get it? So thank you so much. 
So you can please face the church. We want to pray with you for coming to us. So we again welcome you and thank you for being in worship with us. God's word that you hear will bear fruit. And by that, God will extend the victory of Christ Jesus into your heart as a testimony of being with us today. So church, stretch forth your hands and bless these precious children of God that came to us today. Ask God to bless them. His word has come alive. And that the testimony of the word of God working in their lives today by the power of the Holy Spirit shall remain convincing. It shall remain infallible because the truth of the word of God will be our result. Bless them. Ask God to meet them at their points of need. Any of them having a health condition, ask God to remove that. Ask God to heal. Ask God to help them solve their difficulties. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, we thank you for bringing your daughters and your sons to us in worship today. As your ecclesia, we bless them. We ask that the counsel of heaven will work concerning them and that your power will bring into their lives the healing, the help they need in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, thank you for today. Be blessed. In Jesus' name, we bless you. Amen. Amen. Please turn to your left. Follow our brother to a reception we have in your honor. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Did anyone enjoy being in worship today? Anyone feeling so much blessed? Okay, be the first one to stand up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Surely goodness and mercy shall, shall follow you. Oh, you, you, all the days, all the days of your life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days, all the days of your life. Shall follow me. Surely goodness, surely goodness and mercy. Make it personal. See you at the pouring. See you at the pouring. God be with you.